Hello guys and girls, this is Jokester and I'm going to walk you through how to install FTB Unstable, current version is 1.10.2, on Linux. Let's get started. First thing we need to do is download Forge Installer. So I'm going to go into Google, type in Forge, go to the very first one. Uh, current version is 12.18.1.2046. Now. What we need to do is we need to determine what version FTB Unstable is currently using. So if I bring up Curse, go in here. If I were to launch, I've already downloaded it in the Curse client. You can also use FTB Launcher. Um, I'm just switching over to Curse right now. So I'm going to launch this. One quick way to determine what version of Forge it is using is right here, 12.18.1.2046. If we go back over here, we can see 2046, they're actually on the very latest. So I'm going to download this version. It just so happens to sync up with what version FTB Unstable is on currently. They are not always the same. It shouldn't make a difference, but just in case you need to match it, you can hit the show all downloads and it'll show all the previous versions that are on here. So I'm going to install the installer or download the installer. Not the installer for Windows, because we're doing this on Linux. So I'm going to download the installer here. We will wait the proverbial five seconds, six seconds. All right, it's installed. We go down here. We want to keep this. Excellent. It's now downloaded. We minimize this. I'm going to leave this up. And I'm going to bring up my Linux server. I'm running SMB. Uh, um, soundball in here and so i'm going to create a new directory to install this in you can see i've got several other versions installed on here none of them are running right now i can fire them up as needed so i'm going to create a new folder we'll call it ftb unstable let's play all right so we open up that folder drag this over here excellent now we need to hop over command line log into your linux server cd into that folder unstable let's play now we should have the one file in there what we're going to need to do make sure it's the installer not the universal once again we're going to need to type java minus jar forge you're going to hit tab for completion minus minus install capital s server all right that will start installing and you'll notice over here on the right hand side we can see it downloaded minecraft server already We'll download a bunch of stuff. Let's let that finish. Should be fairly quick. Excellent. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to try to run it. To avoid confusion, I'm going to remove both of the installers, the installer.jar and the, in, and the installer log file. So I'm just removing those two files. Permanently delete. Yes, absolutely. So all we have now is these two files in here. I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. Java minus jar, the name of it, forge. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in minus server, and that's it. We'll actually try to launch it. You'll notice it starts to download things, downloads um, various libraries that it needs, creates logs folders, creates a mod folder, creates a config folder. You can actually go in here and see there's pretty much it, um, or nothing in there. Now, if we go over here, it will say in here, failed to load eula.txt. That's the key thing. You need to agree to the eula in order to run the server. eula stands for end user license agreement. So what we're gonna do is we're going to edit, use any editor, whether it's Emacs or VI or Nano, whatever, I'm, I'm a VI guy, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to edit the eula.txt. We change this to true. Save that. Now we can do the exact same thing and the server actually starts up, which is excellent. And we'll see that right now, there's not much in here. It's pretty much done in about three, two, one, and we're done. We are ready, six seconds. We look under the mods, there's nothing there. This is a pretty much a vanilla server with just Forge running on it. So I'm going to shut down this server Excellent. I'm going to go over to my curse client, open this up, say open folder, 
Now, I'm going to move them side by side so we can see here. Under Mods, I'm going to take all these mods here, Control A, drag, drag them over and say Copy. And so I'll copy them all over. Excellent. Now I want the config file, the config files under here. So I will pick everything in here. Control A again, drag over. I say copy here. Yes, please replace the files. All right, that's it. Now, a couple other things I want to do here is I want to throw some memory parameters on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say XMS. That's the minimum amount of memory. So I'll say three gig to start out with. That's how much memory it will allocate to start with. I'm going to tell it a maximum XMX, and that will be, oh, let's say four gig. Now, server has 16 gigs, so it's uh, it's got plenty of memory, but we don't need much more than that for the server. In fact, three to four gig is probably a little overkill for a server, but hey, I've got the memory to spare. It's not doing much else, so let's do that. And then there's also comments that say adding no GUI will help it. I'm not sure how true that is. There's a lot of other parameters that people have had to use in the past. Tell it how much garbage collection um, to do, how many processors to use. All of those by default work really well, and they also use the maximum amount of resources that they have on hand. They do a really good job of balancing. I wouldn't add anything else. This works very well and is also fairly optimized. So that should be all you need to do to start up your server. And we will start this up. Now, this is going to take a bit longer, no more six seconds, because it now has to load all the different mods. But that's a good thing. So we'll see this is, this is launching. In the meantime, in parallel, I'm going to launch up FTB Unstable. You can see we're still at 204.6. Uh, just this is everything default, just straight download directly from the Curse client. If you don't know how to find the Curse client, you can go in here to Browse FTB Mod Packs. And it popped up right in front of me, FTB Mod Packs. And you can find all the different ones. Unstable is right here. You just click the Install just like this on here, and it will automatically do it. If you're having trouble finding it on stable, you could do something like that, or you can do whatever other pack you would like. Um, there's some really good ones in here. And as you can see, I've tried lots of different ones and um, played them to mostly completion. So lots of great packs uh, within not only the curse client, but also the FTB client and in general, the, uh, the community. So this is actually going to take a moment to start up, but we'll give it a, a moment here. One of the things I wanted to talk about is the, the benefit of running your own server as opposed to just launching the client and doing a single play world is that your client, if you were to do a single play world, your client has to handle the rendering of things on screen as well as the world generation in the background. By running a server on a different machine, now what we have is the server is actually doing uh, the the um, world generation in the background and handling all the server information while the client is handling the client side and the rendering. Things are significantly faster and noticeably faster by doing that. So I prefer to install a server every time I play a, a series for an extended amount of time. Okay, we're actually launched here. So let's go into multiplayer. It never seems to find games on my local network. I don't know why that is. It's just strange. I don't know. If you're if you're gonna scan for games, clicking refresh, it doesn't it doesn't ever find it. If you're gonna say you're scanning for games, actually find the server. It is literally two IPs away from my my machine. So we add a server. We can call this whatever. Um, how about if we say Chokesters Unstable Server? All right, server address. In my case, it's 10.0.1.2. We say done. It shows up as green. Excellent. Another way is we can see over here, done. It took 14 seconds to launch that server. Not too bad, not too shabby. So we go back here, we double click on here, and we launch it. Let's just make sure we get a no errors, no whammies. Excellent. Everything looks good. 
All right, that's all I've got. Have a great one, guys. Any questions, of course, leave a comment and subscribe if you like. Take it easy.